Okay, so this video will show you how to work with the effective PPI inside of InDesign when managing pictures from Photoshop. So, and I'm teaching uh, today the international class of 0917. Yes, that's correctly. <laughs> Because you started in September and it was in the year 2017. <laughs> Whoa, now you get all the information. Okay, so let's do this. It's, uh, by the way, this video is recorded at the end of the day, if you're thinking about why I'm weird. <laughs> so, what we're going to do in InDesign is we're going to place a picture. We're going to place some picture. I recommend that you place perhaps the picture that you prepared for today which should have been set to a PPI of 300 uh, saved in SMUG and you know uh, that would coded for 39 and also um, saved as a file type that was TIFF or PSD most likely. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna find just uh, random shit. Okay, <laughs> that's a nice name for a folder. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go in here uh, and find a picture. <laughs> random pictures. And this one is fine. This is fine, yes. Okay. And I'm gonna place it. So this picture seems a bit big and it has a resolution of 300. Inside of InDesign, to check the resolution, you go to links, the panel links, and here I can see the actual PPI and the effective PPI. If I just throw it in, you know, if I just click file place and just throw it in by clicking once on the screen, on the document, it will be thrown in in the size which is it was in in Photoshop. So if it had a specific size and a specific PPI, well, that's the size it's gonna go in into InDesign when you place it. If you had this picture in 72 PPI, um, but still the same width and height, it will come in identically. The, the format would be identical. But if you place it, if you in Photoshop save it as 72 PPI without resampling, it will come in to InDesign four times as big when it's saved in 72 PPI. Meaning that there will not be a quality loss. But most of you will be thinking, what is he talking about? So I'm actually going to do something uh, to this picture. I'm going to resize it. You can resize it using the free transform tool. A quick way of resizing is using the free transform tool. And remember to hold down shift. So I'm just going to resize it and place it somewhere in my document. So this this picture right here is supposed to be 300 ppi. I want this picture to be 300 ppi in this size. But right now it is 533 ppi. Right? You see it says more ppi than it actually is. So this picture is taking out more space on my computer than I need it to if it's only supposed to be in my document in this size. So how can I remove PPI from this. Well, you can't do that in InDesign. You need to do that in Photoshop. So in order to do so, I need to know what is the measurements of this picture. And that's actually not complicated. It says in width that this picture is 182 millimeters times 135 millimeters. Up in width and in height. So I'm just going to write those two numbers down on the whiteboard. So I remember them, 182 uh, times 135. 
because I don't want my picture to be in, in a resolution in InDesign of 533. I just want it to be 300. So this will require me to open Photoshop then after I wrote down these values. So I wrote down the measurements of it's in, uh, in millimeters of this document that I wanted in. And I noticed that it has too high effective PPI. So I'll, I'm going to go in to edit it. To edit a picture, you could choose Edit Original, uh, which is located in the Links um, menu, but if uh, in the Links panel. But if you click that, some of you will experience that it opens up the file in Preview. Yeah. So don't click here on Edit Original. Instead, click up in the um, this Settings menu this flyout menu. So you just click here. <laughs> one, of, one of the teachers we have out here calls this settings area the burger because he feels like it looks like a burger, you know, there's a burger sandwich with, with something inside of it. Okay, but you can click here and then you can choose edit with and then of course here you choose that it's Photoshop you need to edit it with. And if you can't see Photoshop on this list, you find it in other. And that's then that means you have never tried opening Photoshop from InDesign, uh, or it's because your InDesign is a pirate version, so it cannot recognize the Photoshop on your computer or whatnot. But just choose Photoshop. And in here, I still need this to be uh, 300 ppi. Oh yeah, I did, did something very fast. I went into image, image size. The shortcut is command options I, and it sets the shortcut right here. Options in English actually means alt on your keyboard. It says probably says alt on your keyboard. Um, okay, so. I'm going to say image size, and here you notice that if I try to change, uh, let's go to millimeters because I wrote it down in millimeters. So let's say the width and height is supposed to be in millimeters. Um, and thus I can see that this value is far too high. So I'm going to, the mistake I could do here was actually type now in width and height that it has to be. 182 in uh, width and yeah then the other value should automatically follow but what happened I get a resolution of 500, 533 exactly like InDesign told me so that's not making my picture into 300 ppi so what I need to do here is instead I'm just going to go out of the menu I click cancel then go back to image image size and instead what I'm going to do is I'll click for to see it in millimeters again and then I'm going to click my resample button because now I want to destroy pixels for it to become a lower resolution or a smaller size. In this case it's going to be a smaller size which still retains a resolution of 300. So I, I am killing pixels. I'm killing uh, 233 pixels per inch, right? Because the other value was 533. Doesn't matter. I'm, you know, I want it to be smaller. It's still within a, a proper value. It's still good for print as long as it's 300. I'm making it smaller so I cannot lose information in the same degree as I could if I was stretching it bigger. I'm just cutting out pixels. I'm not inventing new pixels. Of course, there, yeah, there will be a minor quality loss, but not anything significant. I'm just making it smaller. Okay, so I'm going to type 182 and still a resolution of 300. Then I'm going to click OK. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to save this. I know that this is, a, in general, it's bad to just save on top of your original. But that's just to save time in InDesign because then I don't have to update the link. Save. 
<laughs> if you did that, you just damaged your original file. But uh, I hope it's not nothing important. You could, you know, have saved a copy instead. Okay. Yeah, you, you could have saved a copy and then in InDesign you could have relinked it by using this icon called relink. But check it out. Check it out now. The fuck? Oh, river, river, river. Check it out. It says effective BPI 300. It said. Now we have a picture that is perfect compared to being a being the size it is, it is perfect. It is not taking too much space on our computer. It is what we wanted it to be, what we always dreamed of. Is it working for you? Okay, so, so. Well, I'm going to put this video out just after the class, so you will be able to watch it on video. So, Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a copy of this and drag it down here. And you know what? To make a copy, you just hold down Alt and drag your object or picture. Like in Illustrator. It's like that in Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, Acrobat, whatever. You can copy objects by holding down Alt. So this object, I want to be in 72 PPI. Here we don't need to uh, note down the measurements in millimeters. Here we just need to go inside of Photoshop again. I'll go to the, this uh, flyout menu in my links panel and I'll choose edit with Photoshop. So I go to image, image size, and here, while resample is switched on, so I destroy uh, pixels inside of the image. If I set it to a lower resolution, it will still retain the size. You know, and I want it to have the same size of the rectangle I made in InDesign, but I want it to be in a lower resolution. So I click. Okay. Was that too fast or did you get it? Yeah, I'll just click undo so you see it again. Image, image size. At any point I can change this picture to be for web instead by switching on resample and setting it to 72 ppi. Notice it will still be the same dimensions. It's still uh, in width and height. It's still 182 millimeters times 135 millimeters. I know it's been a long day. <laughs> You've learned so much. <laughs> okay, so I'm happy about this. And you notice that when I save it, I'm just going to destroy this picture totally. Now I also... <laughs> This is actually really bad. I just saved on top of the 300 PPI version. <laughs> this is actually really bad. I'm just going to go back in time uh, and save it again. Because otherwise it will ask in InDesign, uh, it, it will actually be a copy, two copies of the 72 PPI picture. Right? If that didn't make sense for you, and it seems like a part of the matrix, that's okay. Just, you know, undo once. You can do that in history, just undo once, so it's back to 300 ppi and save it. Okay, then change it to 72 ppi and save it as a copy. That's file, save as, and you can just click as a copy. And click save. Okay. You know what, it's really bad that you are saving it in Chief and probably with the wrong color profile, but let's just ignore that. That's not the exercise right now. So, it's saved with a new name in 72 PPI. I'll go to InDesign and I'll check uh, 
how it looks. And right now it says that it's 300 ppi. That's because it's still using the old picture. So I need to relink it, relink, and then find my new picture. And where the F did I put that? Um, I put it most likely. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? It's placed in random pictures inside of the Danish. Wasn't I there? Oh, I thought I was there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And update. And now it says that it's the same dimensions when it comes to width and height. But it is an effective PPI of 72. <laughs> Meaning now you have the same size picture in both print quality and web quality. Should we press resample if we don't want the number to seem to be? Yes, if you want to destroy information. Yeah. And that's what you want to do if you want to make it for web. Then resample should be switched on. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so I, I think that's uh, that's it.